it's time for Reflections with Pastor Drayton. Hello and welcome once again. This is Reflections, a 15-minute broadcast designed to bless you, encourage you, and strengthen you in the Lord. We're looking into a wonderful passage of scripture in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel chapter 30, and dealing with a subject that, that touches all of us at some point in time and in different ways. But we're talking about discouragement, and I want to show you what David did when he faced a situation that was a horrible situation. And so we begin right here in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 through 6, and I shared up to the first part of verse 6, and I'm going to just read for the sake of connection, and then I'm going to finish it with the last part of verse 6 of 1 Samuel chapter 30 from the Amplified Bible. Now when David and his men came home to Ziklag, home to Ziklag, on the third day they found the Amalekites had made a raid on the south, the Negeb, and Ziklag, and had struck Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken the women and all who were there, both great and small, captive. They killed no one, but carried them off and went on their way. So David and his men came to the tongue, and behold, it was burned, and their wives and sons and daughters were taken captive. Then David and the men lifted up, men with him lifted up their voices, wept until they had no more strength to weep. They cried out all of their tears, and none were left. David's two wives had also been taken captive, Ahinoam, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. And then we come to our text for today. David was greatly distressed, for the men spoke of stoning him, because the souls of all of them were bitterly grieved, each man for his sons and daughters. Here's the reality. The men were totally distressed, as was David. He was carrying a greater burden because he had only not only lost his own family, but he felt responsible for the loss of all of his 600 men's families as well. And the interesting thing is that while in a state of grief, in a state of, of discouragement and distress, the, the men started whispering to each other, guys, I think we better take some stones up and kill David because it's his fault that we have lost all of our families uh, and all of our possessions as well, not just his families, but the possessions because they would have raided them and taken all of their goodies uh, with them. So David was facing discouragement all around. In the reality, the fact that his, his loss, all the men's loss, and then the men were thinking about killing him. Uh, and he was actually with these men because he was running from Saul who was trying to kill him. No, his own men were thinking about killing him. So here is, here is where the rubber meets the road. In verse 6 of 1 Samuel chapter 30, it says here, But David encouraged and strengthened himself in the Lord his God. David encouraged and strengthened himself in the Lord his God. If you look into the original word, um, the original Hebrew, you would see that David took strength from the Lord. And I, I, many, many years ago, I, I read that and understood that, and it's meant so much to me over the years. Uh, David took strength from the Lord. And, and, and again, it depends on where you are today. You might need to take strength to encourage yourself in the Lord because of what you're facing. So if you are discouraged today for any reason, whatever reason it is that you are discouraged, uh, I have my own reasons for being discouraged or facing discouragement. You have your own reasons. David had his reasons. David's men had their reasons for being discouraged. But here's how David handled it, which is a testament and an encouragement for all of us. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He strengthened himself in the Lord. He took strength from the Lord. Now, now, it's easy for me to sit here on this video and say to you, well, encourage yourself in the Lord or take strength from the Lord. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. It's easy to say. It's not as easy to do it. So I'm just going to make a couple of practical suggestions as to how you can do it. Uh, and I'm going to actually take you to another psalm um, of David and show you where he actually encouraged himself in the Lord. As I said uh, last week, sometimes you literally got to grab yourself by the scruff of your neck and pull yourself up. Uh, you can't do that literally, but you understand where I'm coming from. You got to pull yourself out of your own situation that you're in, encourage yourself and says, look, listen, you speaking to yourself, you cannot afford to be in despair. 
You cannot afford to be discouraged. If you are, you open the door for the devil to come in and do whatever he wants. Um, so David, in his situation where he's greatly distressed, today, as I'm looking at this Psalm um, now 42, he is fleeing from Absalom, his son, who was trying to kill him to depose him from his throne as king. So your own son now uh, trying to remove you from the throne and take over the throne. So David was literally fleeing for his life again. It was, it was a part of, of all that he faced as a human being. And, and listen, listen to what David says here. Psalm 42 verse 1. As the heart, as the deer pants and longs for the water brook, so I pant and long for you, O God. My inner self thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears, here it is again, my tears have been my food day and night. David was weeping again. While men say to me all day long, where is your God? Beloved, discouragement comes sometimes after we're in a bad situation. Our friends and people around us mock us not usually our friends but people around us mock us because we are in a place of discouragement and you know as far as they're concerned well your god should have helped you ever since to get out of that situation but here you are still in that situation and sometimes they laugh in your face but other times they laugh behind your back and say you see we knew it his god is not worth a hill of beans uh, and so discouragement came. People were saying, where is, where is your God? Where is your, this God you talk about who's so great and powerful and wonderful and knows everything and, and has everything under his control? Where is he now? We, we can't see him. Where, where is he? And so he faced that additional pressure from people around him. Verse 4. These things I earnestly remember and pour myself out within me. How I went slowly before the throne and led him in procession to the house of God, like a band master before his band, timing the steps to the sound of music and the, the chant of song with a voice of shouting and praise, a, a throne keeping festival. Sounds wonderful. And now look at verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my inner self, or O my soul? Why are you cast down? He's speaking to himself, yeah? Grabbing himself and saying, Why are you cast down? And why should you mourn over me and be disquieted within me? Listen to how David is approaching this discouragement that he's facing. Hope in God and wait expectantly for him. Of course, this is amplified. But hope in God and wait expectantly for him. Sometimes, beloved, you got to talk to yourself, even though people think you're crazy. You got to talk to yourself and remind yourself listen. You got to stop with this foolishness and you have to put your hope in God or put it back in God and wait with faith, with expectancy before him that God will do what he said he would do. Then he says, for I shall yet praise him, my help and my God. So even though he was not experiencing God as his help, he knew God as his help. And so he's not just my help, but he's also my God. He is my God. So he speaks to his soul. He says, why are you disquieted? Why are you downcast? You, you cannot afford to be there. You got to get up out of this. So he talks to himself and he says, you need to get up from here. Uh, I didn't finish the verse. It says, um, verse 6. <clears throat> oh my God, my life is cast down upon me and I find the burden more than I can bear. Therefore, will I earnestly remember you from the land of the Jordan River and the summits of Mount Hermon, from the little mountain Mizar. The reality is David said, look, you see me? I'm not in a good place. I need to pull myself out of this. What did he do? He encouraged himself in the Lord. He spoke to himself and what it says here, which I think is important, he reminded himself, one, that his hope was supposed to be in God. First thing. Two, he says, I will wait expectantly for my God. Even though I've been waiting, it hasn't happened. I will continue to keep my hopes up, expecting God to come through for me. Uh, he says, a burden that, that I can't bear. And, and beloved, it is good to admit, I can't handle this. It is too much for me. However, I will not remain discouraged. I will remember. That's what he says here in verse 6. I will remember what God did for me. I will remember that God delivered me in the past. 
I will remember that God sustained and kept me in the past. It's not the first time I am facing exile. This is not the first time I am facing death. Uh, death threats. This is not the first time and it probably will not be the last time. But in the past, I know that my God has been there for me. He is my help and he is my God. And therefore, I will remind myself to put my trust or to keep my trust or to replace my trust in him who is my help and my God. God has provided for me in the past many 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 times over many years through many different situations God has provided for me why would he all of a sudden stop providing why would he all of a sudden stop caring I know it feels that way but it is not that way in reality even though you can't see it even though you can't feel it even though you can't understand it we know better Scripture tells us, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So David reminded himself that God provided for him, delivered, sustained him in the past. God brought him through in the past. And there were times when, beloved, you know as well as I do, we don't believe God, and God still comes through for us. we got to remind ourselves of that. That's how we encourage ourselves in the Lord. That's how we take strength from the Lord. The, the devil will come and he will send all kind of negative voices in your head. You have to provide that positive voice because sometimes your friends ain't going to do it. And you got to tell yourself, look, see all these negative? I, I'm done with that. I am telling myself, my God is faithful. My God is true. My God is going to come through for me. I am encouraging myself in the Lord. If I got to put on a worship song and sing it about God's goodness, huh? every morning, God's goodness. I'll sing of the goodness. I'll sing of the mercies of the Lord. I'm going to do it. Why? Because I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord. Uh, you want to also remember that God oftentimes brings much good out of our, not discouragement, but discouraging situations. Uh, there's a difference. Not, not the negative that we feel, but the situations that cause us to feel negative. God is going to bring something good out of it. Sometimes more than one good thing will come out of it. God will teach you something in that situation that you're in today. Huh? God will reveal himself to you in ways that he's not revealed himself to you before or remind you of how he's revealed himself to you in the past. But maybe you've forgotten that God is your Jehovah Jireh. And sometimes God has reminded us. This little message that I'm sharing with you is a reminder of the God that you serve. He is your God and he is your help. Sometimes God will even use your situation, your discouraging situation, to help and teach others valuable lessons. Not that I really care <laughs> because it does nothing for me. But hey, point I'm trying to make is in your situation, God can use that to help and to bless others. And we got to kind of come out of ourselves and say, look, even though I may not feel anything good coming out of this, Somebody else is going to benefit and be blessed by it. So I'm going to keep on holding on and keep on believing God. But here's something else that I'm coming close to the end right now. Here's something else that I want to say to you. And it comes as a little bit of a rebuke. But, but just hold on to it if, it if it is for you. All right? It's not for everybody. If it's for you, hold on to this. God wants to teach you to stand on your own two feet. I've talked about this under a different heading before. He wants to teach you to truly trust him and him alone. Huh? God wants to teach you that. Some of you, and forgive my, my reference here, but some of you need to get off the breast. Huh? You're, you're sucking from everybody around you. You need to learn to trust God for yourself. There's some people, I mean, every chance they get, they're telling somebody what their situation is because they're looking to get help from them. Stop it. You have to get past. You have to grow up and get past that and learn to stand on your own two feet. And when you find yourself in trouble, shut your mouth and go to God. Let God come through. Let God learn, minister to you and teach you to wait on and to trust him to do what needs to be done. Let God be who he is to you. That is your source, your provider, and your strength. That's what he is. 
But if you keep leaning to every other people to be your source and your provider and your strength, you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to keep going around in circles all the time. So God will sometimes allow you to be in these discouraging situations, sometimes ordain it for you because he wants to wean you off of the breast, wean you off of sucking milk from everybody. No, 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 no. You need to learn to wait on the Lord and to trust him to be your source. My time is gone. I want to encourage all of you as I finish this message today, encourage yourself in the Lord, strengthen yourself in the Lord as David did when he faced horrible, horrible situations. Your situation is not as bad as David's was. But whatever it is, my word to you today, as I believe the Lord is leading me, is to encourage yourself in the Lord. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. Take strength from the Lord. Stand on your own two feet. And do not allow yourself to stay in that pit of discouragement because God has better things planned and ordained for you. Walk in those things and be a victorious overcomer in Jesus' name. God bless you. I will see you next week. Amen.